The focus of this chapter is going to be on genetics. The first person we have to talk about when it comes to genetics is this guy. His name is Gregor Mendel. He's a little bit different than some of the other scientists we've talked about. He was actually a priest living in a monastery. And part of Mandel's job at the monastery was to grow the plants and things that they had in the garden for the priest to eat. Some of the things he noticed were different traits that were passed down in different generations of pea plants. And what he started to notice after he maintained very, very careful records, like meticulous records, of what each generation looked like was that there were certain patterns. Now, like many scientists... We'll talk about Mendel and understand that he was actually a little bit lucky. One of the things you'll figure out as we move through the chapter is that not everything follows the patterns of inheritance that he discovered. The thing is, he just happened to have plants that all worked the same way, which was nice. So we refer to Mendel as the father of genetics, but keep in mind, not all of the rules that he discovered are necessarily going to hold true 100%. So we'll talk about some of the sort of weird variations and exceptions at the end of the chapter. But for now, let's we'll look at the main thing that he studied. And um, I apologize for this picture. I try to use the one from your book. If I make it much bigger, it gets kind of grainy. But I like trying to keep this consistent with your textbook. He looked at a few different uh, traits in pea plants. He looked at flower color, so either purple or white. Flower position, which is referred to as axial or terminal. In axial, it's about like halfway up the plant. Terminal, it's at the end of the plant. He looked at seed color, which is either yellow or green. Seed shape, which is either round or wrinkled. Pod shape, which is either inflated or constricted. So the inflated one is like how you think of a normal pea. Constricted is kind of like snow peas, where you can see each little like individual seed inside the pod. Um, the pod color, which is either green or yellow, and then the stem length, which was either tall or short, uh, referred to here as dwarf. But I think uh, most sites that we're going to be using are going to use the, the term short. Um, what you'll see with these traits is that there are some of these things that are referred to as genes, others are alleles. Uh, which is one of the terms we'll define at the end, but each major category up here refers to a gene. So each plant, for example, has a gene for pod color. It either gets the green or yellow version of that gene. The different versions are referred to as alleles. So think of them as like the options for the genes. So if you think about people, everyone has a gene for eye color. But the gene for eye color is different. You could have blue, you could have green, you could have brown, you could have all kinds of different genes that uh, contribute to eye color. I'm sorry, all kinds of different alleles that contribute to the, the gene for eye color. So you've got many, many different options. Um, another term that we'll use that we'll define in a minute is the idea of something that's true breeding. So let's say Mendel took a pea plant and they were all tall. So he had four pea plants, they were all tall. He bred them together and all of their offspring were tall. That would be considered true breeding because they're all exactly the same. But if he took a tall pea plant and then a dwarf one and bred them together and got their offspring, those would be considered hybrids because they're a mix of the two parents. And uh, we'll see as we work our way through this chapter that there are ways to tell based on the offspring what kind of genes the parents have. So really, in order to know something's genes, you have to know the, uh, the mate that it had and what the mate looked like and then what their children or their offspring look like depending on what we're talking about. There are a few basic terms that you should understand and have defined by this point in the chapter just to kind of start things off. The first one is just a general definition for genetics. We're going to define this one as the study of heredity. The next one is this idea of true breeding. So in this case, you always get the same offspring. So we're thinking of an example of this. That's like the tall pea plants. If you bred two tall pea plants together and all of the offspring were tall, 
they would be considered true breeding. The next one, which is a different one than true breeding, are hybrids. In this case, it's breeding parents with different traits. So this would be like taking one of the tall pea plants and then one of the small pea plants and, and breeding them together. So we'll just go over a few more terms that are helpful to know. Uh, the next one is genes. These are considered the chemical factors that determine traits. Remember, you get your genes from your parents. These are inherited. You get 23 chromosomes from mom and 23 from dad, just like we talked about in uh, the chapter on mitosis and uh, meiosis. Uh, the next one is alleles. Alleles are different forms of a gene. So we talked about some of these things with the pea plants already. This would be like a gene for um, the pea color, and then the color being either yellow or green. Or a gene for pea height, and then the allele would be either the allele for tall or short. So it's like the options, basically, the options for genes. The last term to talk about is probability. It's a sort of a math term but it's the likelihood of an outcome. The reason I'm bringing this one up, this chapter, we're going to work on predicting if you have one parent that looks like, you know, whatever their traits are, and you know what the second parent looks like, we can predict based on their genes what their offspring will look like. The thing to remember is it's just a prediction. For example, when someone gets pregnant, the odds are 50-50 that they'll have either a boy or a girl. But I'm sure everybody in the room knows someone who has like three boys or four girls or something like that, where they have many children in a row of the same gender. That defies probability. Probability says for every boy, you should have a girl. But we all know that it doesn't really work out that way. So when it comes to genetics, we're making predictions based on probability, but it's not like it's a perfect science. We're not absolutely 100% sure that the offspring will be whatever we predict them to be. It's just a prediction. It's like the weather, and we've experienced this year, uh, you know, how often those guys can be wrong. So probability really just comes down to predicting the possible outcome. It's not like it's something that's set in stone. So uh, I, I know that this was just a lot of terms, but this is really what you need to start things off. As we work our way through the chapter, I promise it'll get a little bit more interactive and more interesting. But for right now, we just kind of have to build up a base of knowledge that we'll be working with moving forward. So as always, uh, thank you for watching, and make sure you, wa you uh, answer the questions after the video is over.